Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of My Future Energy Career. My name is Jalen and I will be interviewing today's STEM hero, Catherine Patton. Welcome, Catherine. Yeah, so great to have you here. So Catherine is an engineer at NG uh, North America. I will pass it over to her and she can tell us a little bit more about her career. Like Jalen said, my name is Catherine Patton. I currently work as an energy engineer at NG North America. I've just started this role, so I listed my, my previous role in this slide as well, which was as an energy analyst at UC Berkeley. And both of these positions are roles I really enjoy. Basically, my work is to address climate change through saving energy and by replacing dirty energy sources with clean energy sources. In my job at UC Berkeley, I worked in their energy office and me and my colleagues um, worked all day long to try to save energy on campus to help the buildings on UC Berkeley use less energy. Lots of our energy sources these days still come from fossil fuels, which when they are burned, contribute to global warming and climate change. So the less energy we use, the better it is for the planet and for all of our futures. So in my current role, it's slightly different. I'm still doing the same thing but I'm also working on renewable energy projects. Um, at NG, we like to help school districts and cities and all kinds of owners of buildings to add renewable energy like solar or even wind to their sites so that they can generate clean renewable energy. And that's the same as saving energy. It helps us limit climate change and have a safer future. Yeah, thank you for sharing. It's an exciting time we live on to start developing these new technologies. But yeah, uh, we will move on to a little bit about where you're from. All right. So I grew up in Denver, Colorado. You can see the blue star on the map I put of the U.S. where Denver is. So it's kind of in the middle of the United States. I spent my whole childhood there. Denver is really close to a big mountain range called the Rocky Mountains. You can kind of see it in green on the map. And so I grew up in the city. Denver is a large city. But I also spent a lot of time outside um, in the mountains and just outside in general, and also spent a lot of time in my middle school and high school years working on an urban farm. So I think that really shaped who I am. I, I grew up in a city, but I also feel like I just really appreciate being outside and how special our outside areas are to us. So a little bit about my family. My, my mom, when I was really young, was a consultant, but then um, changed careers and became a preschool teacher. My dad works in the computer world and is self-employed doing computer work. And I have one younger sister. She's four years younger than me. And so she's finishing school right now to become a veterinarian. I have a really wonderful family. Everyone's very smart, but all in different ways. Even though I didn't realize it early on, I was kind of inspired by my parents to be interested in science and technology, um, but also to really value just being around people and having fun and being outside. So I think that really influenced my career that I have now. And uh, <laughs> next we'll go into uh, some of your interests. Yeah, so I already kind of mentioned, but I, I love to just be outside. Something is, as simple as just being outside in a park after work or on the weekends, just en enjoying the sunshine or things like going hiking and going camping. Um, also, since I was young, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed art. So drawing, designing things, creating art in other ways. That was something that I've I've done a lot of. And when I got into high school, I started pursuing that a little further beyond just like drawing things on my own, and um, really got interested in creating art also digitally and also creating art that's 3D. So I started making a lot of art in high school out of items that were found. Those are some like hobbies and interests I have outside of work, but I also feel like they tie into what I do a little bit because I would consider my career to still have like artistic um, aspects or ways that I still get to design things, which I, which I really value that I have that balance between like science and technology, but also art and design. As an energy engineer, I get to design solar systems. I get to design lighting systems in buildings and outdoor lighting as well, like street lights and also other building systems. So we're doing projects to save energy in a building. I get to create the designs for what equipment we're replacing and how it will all fit together. And beyond that, I also sometimes get to design flyers or even websites about projects that we're doing. This is something that I did when I worked at UC Berkeley a lot was um, to showcase the projects that we were doing and the benefit they're having for our energy use. Yeah, thank you for sharing once again. Um, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And next we'll go into your educational pathway. All right, so um, I went to high school in Colorado at a school called Littleton High School. And in high school is when I really started getting interested in 
science. I had a chemistry teacher um, named Miss Photo in high school who was an amazing teacher and actually thought I hated chemistry before I had her because I'd had a, a previous science teacher that just really was not fun and like made me <laughs> think I hate, hated chemistry. But I decided to take her class. It just made me realize that I actually really liked or even loved chemistry. We did some units on like chemistry in the human body and like how chemistry relates to energy. And I just remember it really got me interested in like technology and real energy and made me think that, that was something I wanted to study further in college. And I also mentioned previously when I was talking about art and design that I took a lot of art classes in high school. So I was like still interested in both of those things. And I went on to college at the University of Arizona, which is in Tucson, Arizona. In school there, I majored in chemical and environmental engineering. I chose this school in part because I wanted to study energy and science but I didn't want to just go to like an engineering school. There's definitely lots of lots of schools around the U.S. that are very, very great at like science and technology studies, but I wanted to be able to still have this balance of like art and design and even like English and other, other sub subjects that I enjoyed in addition to studying energy and science. I really enjoyed my time, my time there. Um, I took a lot of um, chemistry and engineering classes but I also was able to take classes like Cultures, Climates, and Catastrophes, which is a class I'll never forget because we studied different ancient civilizations like the Mayans and different cave dwelling cultures that were very, very successful ancient civilizations that had societies that are were really even as advanced as um, societies are today. For a long time, we didn't know why they just seemed like they disappeared. It was kind of it's kind of been this mystery about what was their downfall and what caused them to go from being so successful and so developed. And they even had um, like scientists of their own to just disappearing. And, and more and more research has shown from people that are studying these civilizations that oftentimes climate catastrophes were what contributed to their downfall. So different societies we studied in this class were unable to survive after there were huge volcanic eruptions or huge floods or huge other like major changes in their rainfall, um, whether it was significant drought, things like we're starting to see in California these days, or like periods of drought followed by lots of rainfall. These like major swings in, in climate caused these societies that were otherwise very successful to really struggle and even cease to exist. So that was one of the classes that I really enjoyed because it, it kind of brought in climate change and looking at how we can learn from, from cultures that had deal with major changes in climate in the past and how we can learn from them and try to really adapt to the climate change that we're facing now. And then after graduating from University of Arizona, I knew by then that I really wanted to have a career in energy and sustainability and put my like scientific interests to work in that way. So I did a one-year fellowship program after graduating called Climate Corps, which is basically a training and fellowship program for, for energy and sustainability careers. So that was um, where I had my first job working on saving energy and um, implementing sustainability measures on a community college campus. The top photo, well, both photos are actually from my senior design project from college, which is a project that a lot of times you'll do. The last year or the last semester before you graduate, um, you do a big project to kind of show off everything you've learned. My team and I in the top picture did our, our senior design project on um, treating wastewater using worms, basically, which is kind of like a new crazy idea that is like a sustainable way to treat wastewater. So when you have wastewater coming from, from houses or businesses, like any water that goes down a drain, normally that's treated oftentimes using chemicals or in, in ways that require a lot of energy to clean it again. So we did some research and found new studies that are showing that you can basically treat this water by, by running it through like dirt that has worms in it because worms naturally eat the contaminants out of the water. So it's just like using nature to do something that it will do on its own without us having to use energy or chemicals to do it. So awesome. yeah, thank you again for sharing. So moving on, we will move on to uh, some things you had to learn to get where you are today. Yes. So I have two different um, ideas on this slide. So the first thing I had to learn throughout high school and college and my career since then is to overcome the feeling that I um, that I have sometimes had that I don't belong in groups of very successful people, which is often called imposter syndrome. So I've really had to remember that, you know, everyone has different strengths and different experience and you definitely belong wherever you are. It's really actually great to be surrounded by um, a group of people that are as smart or smarter than you or as successful or more successful than you, because that means you can learn from them. 
And you should just really take advantage of that opportunity whenever you're in that situation. And the second one is how to communicate with people from different backgrounds. This is something I've I've always been, um, in a sense, good at, but I've learned to be even better at, and it has really allowed me to be successful throughout my throughout my life, both in work and you know in just relationships outside of work. Like I was mentioning a second ago, like everyone comes from from different backgrounds and has different experiences. So everyone learns different things through those experiences and um, thinks of the world in different ways. And when I worked at UC Berkeley, people who worked at the college but did not work with energy on an everyday basis, they were just in charge of running a building. They don't really know what, what I may know about energy and sustainability, but they know exactly what they need to do to run their building. And so it was very important for me to think that it's really helpful for them if I explain what I'm talking about um, in a little more detail so they can understand what I'm trying to tell them. Remembering to put yourself in someone else's shoes and try and think about like what experiences they may have and what ideas they may have that are, that are different than yours and be more thoughtful when you're talking with people so that you can, you can both learn from each other from the, the different experiences and different knowledge that you both have. But yeah, thank you again for sharing. And, um, We'll move on to some other advice you can offer our students. Yeah, so my, my last pieces of advice, I summed it up by the, the words on the left, which say, be bright, but your screen doesn't have to be. So the first part of that, being bright, there are jobs for people who like all different sorts of things, like I kind of tried to talk about throughout the presentation, whether it's science or technology or, or art or design, math, engineering, all, all these different subjects, even writing, no matter what field you're interested in, if if energy isn't your thing, sustainability isn't your thing, whatever field you want to go into, there's probably a, a job for you no matter what. My advice would be to just pay attention to the subjects you like in school, to learn as much as you can and do the best that you can, even if it's something you're learning outside of school. Eventually, you'll be able to, to go into a career that you're interested in. My energy saving tip is um, to turn your screen brightness down on your phone or your laptop or your TV or anything that has a screen. It saves actually quite a bit of battery or quite a bit of power and it may be easier on your eyes so it saves energy it's good for you and then when you are done um, if you put your laptop to sleep or to hibernate that'll be good it'll save even more energy than just waiting for it to go to sleep same thing for tv it's easy but it saves energy and if everyone does their little part it will add up to a lot uh important to remember there's just so many different ways we can save energy in our homes every day but moving on, we'll go to our last section, which is the uh, student Q&A. And my question for you is, at any point during your professional key career or college career um, where you're working on a project and you were just stuck, and um, at what point did you realize that you had to ask for help or you realized it was okay to ask for some help or some assistance? Uh, can you think of any moment in which that happened to you? I can specifically think of a couple times in my first job that I had right after college. I was working in community college and it was like my, my first full-time adult professional job. And I just felt like I needed to prove myself, you know, kind of like I was talking about earlier with imposter syndrome. I just, I wanted to, to prove that I was smart and could do this job and I wanted to be successful. And so sometimes I would have a project and it be on a new topic that I didn't really know a lot about at the time. I, I had to learn almost everything I know about energy and sustainability after I graduated college. Questions about things that I didn't know a lot about from my boss, and I would try to go learn about them on my own so that I wouldn't have to ask him tons and tons of questions about every, every little thing. But sometimes I would get to a point where I just, you know, it was information that I couldn't find on my own and I needed to ask. And it'd be scary to admit that I that I didn't know this thing that maybe I thought I should know or, but I still just had to remember that it's like not bad to have questions. It is good to like try and find answers on your own if you can sometimes. It's a good exercise, but it's also definitely not bad to have questions and you shouldn't feel ashamed to ask anything ever. I think it's good lots of times when, when people present or are teaching these days, they'll say like, you know, there's no dumb questions. Like if you're, if you want to ask it, then someone else probably is thinking it and wanting to ask it too, which I think is is very true. Um, the more you ask and the better answers you can get, the, the more everyone will be on the same page. But yeah, that wraps up our interview. I just want to give Catherine a big, big thank you for coming on this webinar and sharing a little bit more about your career and educational pathway. Yeah, it's been a pleasure interviewing you, Catherine. I just also want to give a big thank you to everyone viewing right now. Uh, if you want to see more interviews like this one, you can check out our channel on Vimeo on YouTube at The Energy Coalition, 
or log on to peakstudents.org to view our full STEM Hero Library.